Welcome to Best Threesome Ever, a podcast discussing all things revolving around nerdy pop culture. Probably not what you were expecting, but it's just as fun. Now here are your hosts, Nick, Rob, and Kevin. Still very uncomfortable to call them Nubians. <laughs> oh God, is that canon? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Nuh, Nubian. Ah. Oh. Did you, I, did you miss I that? Haven't, I haven't come back and watched this. Hey, the chance cube. I was very... <laughs> Is it real? Yeah. Nice. Did you just carry that around with you? No, I, I decided to bring it today just because uh, I, I, I thought there might be an opportunity, and by God, there was. That was a perfect opportunity. <laughs> All right, here we go. Best threesome ever, episode 145, brought to you by Heroic Goods and Games and j Wines. I'm Nick. I'm Rob. I'm Kevin. I'm Nick. I'm Rob. I'm Kevin. God, Groundhog Day. What a great movie. What a great movie. I'm Rob. <laughs> God damn it. Uh... Uh, I, I, you know, speaking of, I think what? I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm gonna buy that 12 minutes game. Um, really? Oh. Yeah. So it is a top-down uh, sort of a loop, time loop game. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, that spans 12 minutes, obviously. Uh, right. About you are a, a you are a fella voiced by uh, Mr. Tomnus, uh, and you're <laughs> married. Freeman. No, no, Mr. Uh, Tom McAvoy. Sorry, yeah. McAvoy. Uh, married to, and you have a wife voiced by Ray. Um, okay. And okay. then a, a burglar or whatever posing as a cop, I think, uh, busts in and beats the shit out of you, uh, voiced by the Green Goblin. Yeah. That's the good one, not the Dahan one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so they have like this all, and those are the only three people in the game. So it, it's just fucking uh, McAvoy, Ridley, and and fucking uh, mm-hmm. d- d- oh, oh god, why am I blanking? Willem Defoe. Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, fucking Defoe. Defoe. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. You have to figure out how to de-escalate the situation, and while also uh, trying to figure out the the secrets that lie within, because apparently once you de-escalate the situation, everybody lives, everybody's good. The game keeps going. <clears throat> okay, so the, this gives me an opportunity to bring up a podcast I really like called... Um, is this a video game? Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, it brings me a chance to bring up a, uh, a video game podcast I like called How Did This Get Played? They have recently rebranded to Get Played. Mm-hmm. Um, and they t- they've they talked about 12 Minutes. Like, spoil the whole thing so I know everything about it. Boo. Yeah. I d- <laughs> from the way they described it, I don't... If you okay. spoil no, the game no, no, for no, me, no, no, I will no, kick no, you square no, no, and the no. newts. I will say nothing about it. Um, no, no, they didn't like it. No. And that's, from what I understand... The, it's very polarizing. The, the ending is very... It leaves a lot to be desired. Okay. Like it's just sort of, did I, did I beat it? Did I, do, I, do I win? <laughs> the general consensus was that it felt half-finished, which is weird. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, I still want to play it. Yeah, um, you know, they, they gotta, they gotta earn that big voice actor money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But huh? so yeah, speaking of Groundhog's Day, mm. yeah, there you go. Just co-opted the entire beginning of this podcast. <laughs> what up? <laughs> That's all right. Uh, I had to look up who his love interest was in that movie because for some odd reason I thought it was Julia, Julia Louise Dreyfus. It is not Sandy McDowell. Yes. Yeah. For some odd reason, I don't know why I thought. I don't know why I thought Julia Louise Dreyfus. Uh, See, and the fact that it's uh, d- d- McDowell, I spent a long time thinking he was Mini Driver. Oh, ah, yeah, I could see how he got there. Oh, sure. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I see how you, how you got there. I always think I associate Andy McDowell more with the 80s, though, than... And I know Groundhog Day was like 92, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. 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 So I just... But I always associate... Because I associate Andy McDowell with the movie um, St. Elmo's Fire. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. But judge me if you want. I love that movie. Um, it's got a great soundtrack. <laughs> it's got a great soundtrack, and it's the only good movie that that director made. But, you know, I'm, I'm also... Bi- well, we're all, we're all also biased, because he also brought us bat nips. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> sure Joel Schumacher. Did. That's who it is. You Anyways, sure yeah. Did. He did have another good movie. He had another one other than St. Elmo's Fire? He did, and I'm, I'm blanking out, but I remember going, oh, he did that? That's good. Why does Batman suck so much? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he was... He's, but I, yeah, I actually thought he was always very good at the Talking Head movie. Joel Schumacher's Ghost. Come on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what, is he here? <laughs> <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> Uh, not that crappy Phantom of the Opera movie. 
It wasn't bad. Speaking of any driver. Oh, sure. Falling anyway. down. He did falling down. Oh, he did falling down. The number 23. Very oh. divisive movie. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Eight millimeter. <clears throat> thought it was crappy. It's very bad. Uh, sorry. It I'm was looking, very bad. I'm I looking at I his I yeah, TV I've, page. Oh, the client. Okay. Oh. Phone hey, booth. He's, he's, he's got a phone. couple good things. Oh, he's, shit. Duh. He did fucking Lost Boys. Oh, shit. Oh, that's right. Saber's right. like favorite movie of all time. Bad company. It's also a whole. fucking fire soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> Lost Boys? Yes. You know, Schumacher's movies have always had really good soundtracks. He's very good with music. Batman, uh, Batman Forever uh, gave us both versions of that kick-ass Smashing Pumpkins song. Yeah. Yes. The beginning also, is the end is the beginning, and the end is the beginning is the end. Yes. Yeah. It also... Didn't Kiss that, from a Rose. I was going to say, isn't that Boom, one also Kiss sure from did. a Rose? Yeah. He okay. actually he also directed that video. Uh Awesome. He, he gave us a client, too, which I don't think I ever watched. I said that. Oh, did you? He I'm did. sorry. Um, although, coming back to Falling Down, I have seen that movie once. I'm uncomfortable to say that I liked it. Well, <laughs> and, and I did, too, then. But, like, looking back on it, you're like, ooh. Yeah. White like guy rage. Oh, cool. Well, well like, yeah. at the time, I even felt uncomfortable about it because it was just, it felt like I understood and agreed with everything he was saying. But then he would shoot someone. I'm like, but maybe we're going too far with this. Yeah. Like, genuinely, actually a good movie because it made me think, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, Joel Schumacher, Sch- Schumacher is also apparently a screen... The screenplay writer for The Wiz. Oh, like the 70s Wiz? Awesome. What's interesting is, uh, is that when he did uh, Batman it Forever, appeared. what he originally wanted to do was not a sequel to Tim Burton's. He originally wanted to reboot the franchise, right. and he wanted to do a really dark, uh, like making Tim Burton's look like cotton candy, which right. it already is because those films are fucking horseshit. <laughs> Fight me. Um he wanted to do Batman Year One. He basically wanted to make the Batman, yeah, mm. what it is now. And I, I think knowing what we know about him as a director, I, th- I think it might have been okay. Mm. Might, might have been. Probably wouldn't have had nipples. The studio forced him to uh, to do a lighter, family friendly. Yeah, <sighs> yeah but well, at least, oh, well, that worked out for him. No, you know, well, it made you know, money. Guess we'll never know. Guess we won't. Um, I am sad that George Clooney, uh, it. Not that he talks trash about it, because rightfully he should. I'm sad that that was what George Clooney got to do for a comic book film. I think he could have done something amazing with a lot of other... Okay, this just came to me. What if he had done what if? Yeah, no, naturally. Um, No, but what if he had... He, instead of Hasselhoff, as Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Yeah. No? I I would like to see. I think he would have made a very good villain, Clooney. Yeah, interesting. <clears throat> yes, like I could see him as like Black Mask. Oh, that would be good. Um, I I wouldn't... before Kenobi did it. Sure, yeah. sure. I I also wouldn't hate him as just a nameless exec at Ragsan, or well, not you can't nameless. Put, yeah, you can't put Clooney but, as quote nameless exec. But you know what I mean. Like he's the big bad. Of the Roxxon Corporation, and I think that's interesting. Like, yeah, he could play slimy corporate pretty fucking well. Did you Mr. see... Mr. Sinister. Bruh. Oh, but I hate it, but I oh. love it. Oh. Hmm. I think he would have been smooth as silk. Oh, Especially like but, in the, but the, 90s. Like the mid-aughts or so. At oh, the sure. At mm. the latest. Like, I'm also like, thinking like for about... X-Men 3 instead of the, the horseshit Brett Radner... Phoenix movie, sure. or even in the mid two thousand tens with the horseshit Brett Ratner Phoenix movie. D- uh, <laughs> <laughs> why did they give it to him twice? Someone tell me. I don't know. Tell me they, why. I don't know why he, how it was possible to even make it worse. Did. He well, and and there were elements that were better. Yeah, there were. Yeah, it was just everything that had nothing to do with the Phoenix storyline. <laughs> Correct. Because once again, he took. Uh, you know, a preview of the Phoenix where she was all fire and fury, and he went, "What if?" And hear me out. I threw that in the trash <laughs> <laughs> and didn't do fire for a Phoenix twice. <laughs> and I know it's because he wanted to try and link it up 
to his movie. Yeah. But that's also garbage. He had a second chance and he fucked it up twice. Yeah. Yeah. I did just watch a Brett Ratner movie the other night, though. What movie was that? Rush it, it was. It was okay. The 355. Oh. Oh. That's Brett Ratner? It was just okay? Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was, it, it was, it was every, like, thing you wanted sort to- of, like, secret agent trope yeah. that's yeah. ever existed. Right. That's sure. been done more interestingly. But it was entertaining, for sure. The the right. gunfights were awesome. The fight fights were awesome. And so I'll enjoy chicks it. Chicks kicked ass. Yeah. Yeah. You see Benjamin William kick ass. Fine. Yeah. yeah. Great. Sounds great. I'm excited to hear his play-by-play analysis of all the gunplay. Probably horseshit, because it's always <laughs> used in movies like that. <laughs> no, no, I shouldn't say always. Uh, it's... it's uh, and that comment was nothing other than I know that's what uh, Nick tends to to z- zoom in on in a it is. in a gun it in a gun shooty shooty especially movie if it's out. really good um, yeah I appreciate it I've been recently wa- rewatching Third Watch which was a show ninety nine to like two thousand five two thousand six sure sure it was about New York cops and New York fire department and blah 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 and I'm I'm watching it with a different perspective because. After we like, have talked about propaganda and this and that, and you know, what are they really trying to? What story are they really trying to tell? And I'm I'm finding this very interesting because it, I don't think it. If you, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, it's not very propaganda ish. I mean, they I mean they're not like promoting. It's more about like the interaction between the individuals and the like. It's it's very story driven at the beginning, and I know later on, in, because I've seen all of the episodes. Uh, way later on, right when the season was, or right when this uh, series. Uh, series was coming to a conclusion, it got really, really convoluted very quickly and just became just this zany, zoinky, like, hey, are we going to do this now? Oh, we're going to have a shootout in a hospital? Okay. Oh, we're going to firebomb a police department? Okay. The Grey's Anatomy approach, got it. Well, right, ah. right. Once, once they brought in, uh, what's the dude from Kiss, the bass player? Gene Simmons. Once they brought in Gene Simmons as this like evil overlord of the under CD underworld, uh, like a mobster that they piss off, and then he f- decides to have a, a war with the New York Police Department. Like literally, that becomes the storyline for like two seasons. All right, I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> it just you started with Gene Simmons as a as a criminal underlord. I'm like, I never know. I wanted that, or I never knew I wanted that, but. I do, but I his do dry. Them. But like, if you think about the way like he speaks, like huh. his dry kind of sure is, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and I yeah. mean, I've I've seen him act in a couple of things before, and, and it's never been good. <laughs> uh, I feel like there were a lot of scare quotes quotes around <laughs> act. Uh, and speaking of though, like it brings me to an interesting thing that I've been watching. Um, I have also been watching it. I'm sorry, did I? I didn't mean to cut you off. Which was the new guy. Uh, oh. Where he basically played himself as a reverend, like a <laughs> oh sure, like a like a gospel reverend, which I thought was very interesting, that especially is... because he's very Jewish. He is very Jewish, uh, yeah. But like that movie also had a lot of like uh, like metal and rocker and punk cameo. So you know, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. What were you watching? Uh, uh, I'll come back to it in just a second. But first, like. Um, what's weird is that like Gene Simmons has very strong ties to like R and B music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he that is like he is. It, all right, fine. Uh, at one point, I watched a lot of Gene Simmons Family Jewels. It's not my fault. Oddly enough, I did too. My father put it on the TV. I don't know why I watched it. I don't know why I watched it either. But he did an episode where he went to some school in England somewhere. Um, and he played the Kiss song, God Gave Rock and Roll to Us. Yeah. I thought you were going to say Love Gun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, if you play Love Gun one more time. It's his penis. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> the gun is his dick. <laughs> yeah, the gun is his dick. Um, but like he, like he just sort of, like in that episode, he sort of just breaks down and pulls away all of the stuff around that song and just breaks it down to an acoustic guitar and you're just like, oh, that's a fucking blues rhythm. That's what he's playing. And I'm like, that's fucking cool, man. That's pretty dope. And he sort of breaks it down into this sort of gospely tinged blue rhythm and blues version. And I'm just like, all right, I, I respect your musical prowess. The rest of the things you do are weird, but 
it's fine. Anyways, speaking though of odd cameos in two uh, thousands television, I was gonna say DJ Qualls movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm watching a show right now um, that's sort of the Newfoundland Canada version of Psych. <laughs> Okay. It's called the it's called Republic of Doyle. You can find it on Amazon Prime. If you're a fan of Psych, I can go ahead and say that you most will most reasonably like this. It is at times a little copacandy, but it it does focus mostly on the family of private detectives named I mean, the Doyles. Psych could be sometimes. So, too. Yeah, they could. But I, I do I do love that series. It's a it's a very good series. But like replace the buddy comedy of Dulé Hill and uh, what is the James Rod- Rodriguez um, replaced the, the buddy comedy of that with like the sort of mismatched generational humor of a father son team. Mm, sure. Um, uh, anyways, so I was watching through and the season three premiere has an outstanding set of cameos. Uh, literally all four of the, uh, the Robin Hood and his Merry Men actors from the um, Russell Crowe Robin Hood, including <laughs> Russell fucking Crowe. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> really weird. And, they're, and the weird. four of them are a team. And they, I don't know how the hell they got all four of them to show up for this tiny little Canadian television show in the uh, mid 2010s, but like they did, um, hmm. uh, they got them because like the the song the the theme song is by the band Great Big C. The lead singer is Alan Doyle. Alan Doyle played Alan Adele in that movie. Weird. Holy shit! Oscar Isaac was Prince John in that movie. What the fuck? He yeah, was. He was. He was. It's fucking weird. Yeah, Mark. It's not a good movie though. No, not no, even in the slightest. But like, so Alan Doyle was also friends with the creator of that show, and so like, called him up and said, "Hey, you, you wanna, you wanna have all four of the Robin Hood and his Merry Men from the new Robin Hood movie in an episode? Sure, why not? It's weird. It's weird. Uh, Russell Crowe is half asleep the entire episode." <laughs> it sounds about right. <laughs> Thank God. And he is. This is this is this is post his Robin Hood workout, so he's he's a little paunchy, but still fun. And he actually not bad at the comedy chops. Still half asleep, mind you, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a weird. We have gone off on some weird fucking yeah, tangents. Didn't we have today. stuff to talk about today? <laughs> we did. We did. <laughs> I was going to say though, uh, Third Watch should have one of the best season or series wrap ups ever in like twelve minutes talking about what each, each character continued to do. So, in like a, I like when they do that. Yeah, in like a Coach Carter, and I'm hopeful. No, uh, it was just uh, Stand by Me. Ooh, it was just one of the main characters, uh, just voicing over what everybody. Oh, these guys did this, and they did this, and these people after this happened, they got married, and. Sorry, Sandlot. Then got it. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Very, very Sandlotty. Yes, <laughs> oh. Animal uh, House. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, <laughs> Senator Robert Butarsky. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but it's not in words. It's just sure. to talk over. Did, it, but, did yeah. one of them like start running towards the camera and disappear as they talked about how he mysteriously disappeared? No, but there was somebody running towards the camera. Yeah, no, nope. uh, Boscarelli because he's like, yeah. Boscarelli, he's still out there kicking ass and taking names every single day. And he's like foot chasing some guy down. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, yeah, there's a lot that's happened since we last recorded, uh, oddly enough. Uh, there are a couple major purchases that happened recently. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, Microsoft buys Activision's Blizzard for $70 million, And then Sony was like, hold my beer. Well, well, they, they, they bought a couple of things. Well, yeah. Because uh, they bought Activision Blizzard. They bought... Um, uh, Bethesda. Oh, did they? Yeah. The Beth- that Bethesda- was a while back. Bethesda was a while back, but like, but Xbox has been making some purchases. And yeah. Sony, bless their heart. Right. <laughs> well, they went and bought Bungie for uh, $3.6 billion with a B. Uh, so. Destiny's free. 
Right. What are they buying? But doesn't didn't Bungie also create Halo? Yeah, but they Bungie sold Halo to three seven three. Are they still a subsidiary though? Nope. Nope. They do not own. Separate. They do not own any of the rights to Halo anymore. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, why they made Destiny. Gotcha. And and Microsoft confirmed it agreed to acquire Activision Blizzard for sixty eight point seven billion. Did you say billion or million? I don't know. Activision was yeah. seventy million. Billion. What is it? Sixty-eight point seven billion. What are you reading that off of? Uh, this would be TechRadar dot com. I don't know what that is. Well, the article I read said seventy million, or maybe I misread it, which is also very possible. Yeah, this one's off of CNET, and um, currently the the FTC is uh, reviewing the acqui- acquisition, <laughs> which is fair. Yeah, three four three industries. Gotcha. Yeah, it's January thirty first. The the article. But we'll definitely have to get some to some more Halo news from in a moment. Forbes magazine. Hmm. Uh, three point. So, oh, it did say seventy billion. Sorry, I did read it wrong. Oh, Bungie okay. was J- Bungie was just three point six billion. Yeah, sorry, I, I misread that. Less than billion. Marvel. Wow. Uh, yeah. So those are. I don't know. It, <sighs> I I mean I feel like we should talk something we haven't talked about yet, uh, but we should talk about the fact that. Activision Blizzard has been in a bit of controversy over the last year. And and that's part of the reason why they, they went to acquire it. They're, they're cleaning house and, and trying to, to turn the ship. Yeah, yeah. Um, for those that don't know, Activision Blizzard has been sort of mired in some controversy over, well, women in gaming, um, uh, workers' rights uh, surrounding... Really, all you have to do is Google the Cosby time. suite and, and, and you'll you'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm upset that that's true. <laughs> um, it's, it's it's fucking bad. It, yeah, and they so they they got rid of all of those people. They got rid of the head up, and they they announced uh, two new co CEOs because they're like, oh, we're gonna okay. we're gonna put a woman as CEO, and they did. But then they also put in a guy as well. Um, and then within a couple of months, the woman uh, stepped down. She was like, mm, no, <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. So and it, yeah, they and I haven't. Uh, I haven't played WoW or anything in a long time because Same. of all this. But uh, if if Sonny can can fix what uh, what's been ailing them, I'll you know, pick it back up. Uh, Microsoft can. Did you say Sony or my? Uh, now I'm confused. Whichever I said, if, if, I thought I said Microsoft, but if Microsoft, uh, you know, fixes the ship, I'll uh, yeah, yeah. I'll get back on. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, this is video game stuff, so I'm not super familiar <laughs> with all of it. So yeah, video game stuff. Uh, I was, you know, obviously you guys know more about that than I do. So I mean, it's yeah. it's just, as is my motto: uh, enough to be dangerous. Right. Well, I I think <laughs> I think Sony has learned their lesson that when you give fans what they want, you make money. Um, I e Spider Man. You know, when you give the fans what they wanted, especially in the last one. Uh, make a shit ton of money. Something interesting happened in the last Spider-Man movie. I wasn't. I don't know. I didn't, I, I didn't hear it. I didn't see no. It. I, don't fucking, I don't know. I don't. I just heard words. No, it was really fucking lame. But yeah, they did really talk lame. to the three co-stars about their really fucking lame uh, bits in the movie <laughs> recently. Did. Their first interview, um, and it was joyful. <laughs> yeah, I haven't watched it yet. Oh, it's it's joyful. It's 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 wonderful to watch because Andrew Garfield is is a sweet sweet bean. Right, right, right. Um, so, anyways, so yeah. Anything? Else? I don't know. I, I don't know if this, these are good purchases or bad purchases, other than the activation. Their purchases, getting- that's for sure. Yeah, it's <laughs> concerning, um, uh, especially to a lot of people who play a lot of, um, especially Bethesda stuff. Um, that one hit a lot of people because uh, they're some of their biggest IPs. Your your Elder Scrolls, your fucking Fallout's. Um, you know, people are wondering if those are going to continue to be cross-platform or if Microsoft is going to get the be-all, end-all on it, mm. um, which is an interesting juxtaposition to the last generation where Sony had, I think, 20 times more um, like exclusive uh, IPs than, than Microsoft did, and that's why the PS4 blew the fucking Xbox One out of the water. And right. now Microsoft is like... Hold my beer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it, it, it's interesting. Um, as far as I know, because they're already announced cross-platform, the Elder Scrolls Six and the new Fallout game are supposed to be 
probably cross platform still. Um, uh, but this new one, uh, Starfield, uh, is Xbox only. Do you think? Uh, and I don't know. Do you think they were trying to do this because they might have feared that Xbox was fading in popularity? Maybe. It's possible. It's it's another facet of the console war. Right. Um, you know, it, Xbox has been flagging for a couple of years. Um, just, just behind Sony because they've been putting out an, an excellent console. Um, and yeah, and Xbox hasn't had as many uh, exclusives. Right. They, I, they, they mostly have been trading off of the power of... Here's the thing, though. They've been trading off the Game Pass and, like, fucking indie games. And, like, I don't know. I think they found a niche, and now they're trying to go back to the old way of doing things where they just purchase things so that... Other people th- can't. Other people can't. Right. So that's... I don't know. I, mm, I heard that's why Sony did the... The buy that they did because they didn't. Were, they were trying to prevent Microsoft from. Sure, that's possible. Um, that's, but I feel like they both had this good system going because, like, yes, Xbox is not always it hasn't had as many exclusives. However, they've had more indie exclusives, and their indie exclusives have been going to their Xbox Game Pass, which has right. been relatively success. I don't have Xbox Game Pass. You do. Um, I, I, I haven't used it because I don't really have an Xbox right now. Okay. And I haven't used the PC version. Okay. And I haven't either. I probably could. I just haven't. But Again, uh, I'm I, a Steam player. It's... I will say I am, I am uh, interviewing for uh, I have two interviews coming up for a new job. Uh, one tomorrow, one on Friday. And one of them is for Microsoft. No. <laughs> one of them is testing video games. No, 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 no. no, no. Sadly, no. I would love that. But uh, still in my field, just, you know... Um, Different position, better pay. Gotcha. Um, and I, I was, I was told specifically that if I, if I get this new job, uh, she will be okay with me getting an Xbox. <laughs> 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 so, so I'm gonna. Because <laughs> fucking Hellblade Two is coming out soon, and it's a goddamn Xbox exclusive, and I need to fucking play it. <laughs> if y'all speak, Kevin, you knew exactly what he said. <laughs> uh, I feel also that this is. <laughs> Uh, that Xbox, after this new Halo series drops, I have a feeling there's going to be a new Halo game, and obviously that's an Xbox exclusive. Well, a new one just came out, yeah. so I, I don't see a I don't see a brand new one being no. in the cards unless it's uh, sort of an offshoot, like your Reach, your OSTs, that kind of thing. Right. Maybe. Uh, Although this brings me back to an interesting point regarding Bethesda and um, and Microsoft buying them. Uh, does that mean we're going to get like more streamlined? release dates on Bethesda games because I don't mind that. That sure would be nice. That would uh, be great. It's been nearly 10 yeah, years. Been. Yeah. yeah, it's been <laughs> nearly fucking 10 years since Skyrim. Uh, well, there was Fallout 76. Yeah, it's been nearly 10 years since Skyrim, and their last great game. Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah. Ten years. That's what I said. <laughs> uh, though, speaking of Halo, did you guys watch the newer, the newest trailer? Yes. Yes. I didn't. God, I didn't know there was God one. Da- yes. This one shows fucking everything. You get to see the fucking ass and titties, co- covenant shit. Yep. You can see uh, t- ass and titties. You can see Cortana. Yeah, you can see Cortana played right. by Cortana. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, that's that's good to hear. At the, the very end. end. Yeah, but it's worth the wait. Yeah. I wonder if they're gonna make the Master Chief thing like a like the Mandalorian thing where like you can't take off your helmet. Because it's played by uh, uh, porn, porn stash. stash. <laughs> I can't think of the actor. Pablo Schreiber. Yep. That's it. I, I, was, I, was, is, I was about to say Pablo, but I'm like, that's not right. Like, Pablo is in my head. Is it Lee Schreiber's cousin? I think I, maybe I don't know. They're related. I know that. Oh, I, just can't remember, I can't remember if it's uh, if it's cousin or brother. But he was also the the leprechaun in uh, American Gods on Stars. Oh yeah, sure, he was also Sweeney, Matt Sweeney. Yeah, he, he's also. Uh, it was also on Thirteen Hours and <laughs> played played the the, the guy very well. Um, uh, so he, yeah, it was good. Speaking of that, did we talk about John Tutor? Uh, John, uh, his sibling is in fact Leif Schreiber. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, half brothers look like. Uh, did we talk about uh, John Tutel- Tutur- Tuturo? Tuturo? Tuturo John Tuturo. playing uh, Falcone. Falcone. Falcone, whichever it is. Yeah. Did we I've talk heard, about I've that? I've heard both. And, 
Uh, I don't think we have. Uh, John Turturro is playing Falcone. That's pretty awesome. It is pretty That's awesome. pretty good. Thank you, fucking Rocket. Yeah. He's, he's a man that I, you can't, he can play a lot of different uh, cultures or ethnicities, but he doesn't, he seems to blend it in really well. Like, Sure. Uh, his brother uh, looks uh, more Hispanic than he does and has played like Bronxy Hispanic characters. Uh, but to, to his older brother plays like everything from well, some stupid white guy in the South to fucking the butler in that one Adam Sandler movie to <laughs> everything. I mean, we, he, he follows a, a pretty solid tradition of, of, you know, the, the sort of Brooklyn Latino who can play a Brooklyn Italian at the drop of a hat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. John Leguizamo. Yeah. <laughs> as Luigi in the Super Mario movie. No, never forget. <laughs> <laughs> that <Leguizamo. laughs> he yeah. But no, I we love that dude. Yeah, I me too. John but Leguizamo. we don't talk about him anymore. John Leguizamo. No, 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 no. no, no. no. We don't talk about Leguizamo because oh. he played their foot frame rats so long his back when he calls your name all fades to black. black. I totally deserve that. <laughs> I totally set, unknowingly set oh, myself up for that. You did. It was beautiful. You did. It was great. Do you have a spray bottle? <laughs> no. Why? I want to record like a thing. This is, this is completely off. <laughs> oh, okay. I want to record a thing too, but we have to bring those helmets. You have to, you have to fucking tell know, me, dude. I'll come early and I'll bring them. You, but you got to tell me. Bet you will come early. Oh. <laughs> uh, you just got to tell me. Speaking of other casting ones, I'm going to go through these really quick because there, we have a lot. Um, but there were just some like random ones. Like, there's a picture recently released today. of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger as uh, Zeus, Zeus for and, what? Uh, I think it's just going to be a Super Bowl commercial. I don't think it's going to be anything. Oh, cool! Uh, because now, it's not on his, it's not on the IMDb page. It, but I know, and it just says February something 2022, 2022. which is when the Super Bowl is. Right. I think it's just going to be a Super Bowl commercial. I don't think he's going to be Zeus and Black Adam. I don't think it's going to be for the new Percy Jackson. Uh, whatever. I think God it's just going to be some stupid commercial for some stupid crap. Doritos. Oh, Pro- oh th- probably Doritos. That's my prediction. Doritos. I'm Doritos. Gonna say, I'm okay. going to say Doritos. Right. I'm, I'm going to write this uh, down. Some, some good, shitty American beer. Nice. Rob? Nice. Oh, um, Skittles. Skittles. <laughs> Skittles. <laughs> Kevin. Really? Mine was the most out of the box? <laughs> I thought you were going to say like Subaru or something. <laughs> American beer. Skittles. I'm saying Doritos. <laughs> ah, shitty American beer. If it's a good American beer. I said like shitty. A, yeah. I said okay, shitty. Good, good. Yeah, what do you consider a, shitty? Like any of the, the, the American Anything uh, by Pilsners. Anheuser and okay. or Bush. Yeah, any of the, the American Pilsners. So if it's if it's anything other than that, like, like Rolling Rock or anything like that, it doesn't yeah. count. So yeah, Budweiser, your Coors, your Millers, your Michelobes. So one of those. Yeah. Okay. Uh and Rob, what's your final answer? I said Skittles. Said really? Skittles. That's you're gonna stick with that? I'm sticking with Skittles. <laughs> Stick with Skittles, Bob. All right, just going for the one dollar bet. We'll see how this works out for him. <laughs> it's good stuff, right? Uh, so yeah, so whatever the fuck that is. Um, we recently saw a picture of Amelia Clark on Secret Invasion. They're looking like some kind of hobo person, right? Like they're like, "Oh, she's filming. She's got this big role, but nobody knows the role." And it's just like she's in like regular clothes. Like she could have been. She's a hobo person. Like, yeah, she could have been fucking uh, just walking on set. Who fucking knows? No, she wasn't. There's cameras around. Well, I mean, it's Secret Invasion, so it's scrolls. So yeah, she's gonna look like she normally does, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is until new, she doesn't. Secret until Invasion, the new yeah. Marvel series coming out. I. This is just the scrolls and the uh, what was it about? I forget secret. Uh, the scrolls who are uh, well in the comics, the scrolls are a lot more evil than as they've yeah. been portrayed in the MCU. Yeah. Uh, but I think they are going to that storyline of scrolls who have made their way, who have infiltrated places of power uh, around the world, uh, government stuff like that. Uh, interesting, interesting. It wasn't uh, Shield. Uh, prominent members of Shield. What was the name of the race in X Men that? Uh, Xavier married the the alien race. The Shi'ar. Shi'ar. The Shi'ar. They they the Shi'ar they were in in Dark Phoenix. That's who right. um, uh, 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 Jessica Chastain was playing. Yep. Uh, mm. Was was she was playing Leandra? But Leandra was, um, you know, she was very serious and took her job very seriously. But she was she was 
you know, kind hearted and she right. just wanted to protect people. So I don't know what they were thinking, making her like this psycho well, bitch. But you know, whatever. We talked about that. <laughs> Probably the director. I will. I will have things to say about both Phoenix movies until the day I die. Uh, absolutely, or until they that's do it better. Right. But I don't want them to anymore. That's uh, they've they had their chance twice, and I genuinely they're just, don't. They're just going to keep giving it to Brett Radner. So fuck it. Yep. Simon Kinberg, I think. Right. What? Simon Kinberg wrote both. X movies that involved the Phoenix. Don't know. Right, Atner so. just directed the third one, but he wasn't actually involved in the in Dark Phoenix. He was the director of the Dark Phoenix. Was he really? He yes. directed both movies. Yes, they gave. That's what I meant when I said they gave it to him fucking twice. Hey, he dumb. They dumb. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Bad? <sighs> no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean bad like like as in you're wrong. I mean bad like <laughs> like it might, oh. I, that makes me feel bad that they did that twice to me. That, that yes. they subjected me to this twice. Anyway, let's continue on uh, to let's let's do that. I'm just gonna keep being mad about it. Let's <laughs> see if we can get you mad about something else instead. Uh, he Man has cast their live action He Man, and it's Kyle Allen who is from West Side Story, who I don't know why they because he's he's gonna play prince adam and then when he's he-man they're gonna use cg and shit nice i like it <sighs> can't they just get a guy that's actually like bulky and no no I'm, they don't you know, make lou ferrigno anymore and no because he-man nobody is actually that big and the like two people on earth who are can't really act like yeah. sure you could get the mountain but he's gonna be like uh yeah which, I was, bless his heart, he's he, he's a, just a, a great Dane in, in the form of a person. <laughs> but fucking... Uh, but fucking... But there's no way... Like, He-Man, especially now, he's bigger. He's, he's yeah. huge yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but, so they can't... But uh, they could get a m- more muscular individual. Not to, not to say that Kyle Adam uh, Allen isn't muscular, but... Uh, like ripped like well, I, Dave Batista or The Rock. I'm just using their bodies as an example. But you're also going off of the 80s, oh, He-Man. That's true. And it, and if you watch the Kevin Smith one, I have. Uh, he's tiny. Yeah, he's a little, he's a little baby boy. Yeah, I suppose he's super skinny now. Yeah, he's less shoulders. He's. Vi- I will pull up a picture right now. He's so skinny, dude. <laughs> I I just watched it for the second time because I wanted to show Saber it. I haven't watched the second half I'm, yet. Oh. I Dude, don't. I know. Oh, you got it. Oh, it's fucking list. Evil Lynn's story arc is the best story. It was arc. already getting good. It gets better. <laughs> no, I should watch it. I'll watch it. Fucking. He's up. very amped up today. He is. I'm. Up. I'm here for it. I'm I am not saying anything bad against it. But I'm it, not super amped up today, so that's okay. We we play off that. We feed off. Yeah, it's good. Good energy. It's a baby boy. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. Prince Adam is yeah. Yes, but in the eighties, he was still fucking huge. Oh yeah, the Prince Adam was huge because they were like pretty much the same. It's just like yeah, he just he just got nude. That was the only difference. Yeah, he took off he took off the proverbial Superman glasses. But the the P Man, I was I thought you meant the actual He Man's a little bit. He's skinnier, but still relatively yeah yeah. yeah. But yeah. I'm saying the He Man in that series is still big, bigger than the. Uh, yeah, because that's the '80s He Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the Kevin Smith He Man. He's still relatively more uh, bigger, more and he, bigger, and he's way more jacked. Yeah. I was specifically talking about He Man, not Prince Adam. Well, yeah. the, but that's you know, yeah. That that was the point I was trying to make. Gotcha. Is that yoked as hell? Yeah. <laughs> like he's gonna play Prince Adam, and then when he turns into He Man. He's uh, nice. like a Hulk sort of a deal. All right. I mean, he's a good actor. We'll just, I mean, yeah. we'll see how it goes. We will see. We will see. We will see. I just don't, you know, the last He Man live action was, well. I want to watch it again. <laughs> really Dude, it, I watched it I, like a couple months ago. <sighs> so I've been putting together, like, uh, this started a couple episode, episodes ago when we talked about Dr. Mordred. Sure. Uh, uh, I, I want to put together a, a list of, like, the the comic book inspired adaptation movies that we all know are terrible and we should just do a movie marathon day. Then a Lundgren's Punisher has to be on there. Lundgren's Punisher has to be on <laughs> Dolph there. Dolph Lundgren's Masters of the Universe has to be on there. Yeah. It's just it's gonna be a bunch of Dolph Lundgren movies. <laughs> that, uh, that really shitty Captain America. Uh the nineties one, yes. Yeah, yeah. Was, see if we can get our hands on that Fantastic yep. Four too. Oh no, sure. I mm, uh, 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 yeah. 
buddy, are I gonna, don't. Are we going to record all this? <laughs> uh, but oh, as a we, palate cleanser, we could do like a little MST three K style thing. Yeah, uh, as a palate cleanser, though, I feel like we should remember to add in something like Speed Racer. Sure, the live yeah. action version. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, as a palate cleanser, not a good movie, but a fun movie. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll have fun with them. Um, oh, I, we'll definitely have fun with them regardless. It's just, you know, <laughs> I would like to ease the pain every once in a while. So uh, we'll slip in something like the Speed Racer although, or an episode, the, the pilot episode of the Justice League uh, TV series. What was uh, oh, the pilot episode of Wonder Woman <laughs> with, with Adrian Palicki Ooh. and the vinyl pants? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the vinyl pants. Uh, what was uh, what was the guy that played the not Oracle role? He, uh, Billy... Oh, um, it was R two D two. Yeah, <sighs> Kenny Baker. Kenny Baker. Okay, but what was the what was the character's I, name? I had just looked it was this not, up. Not Orko. No, oh, it was right. Like, it was like it's a brick. Weird. It was Brickle or something like that. It was something stupid. It was. Um, I thought he was the best part of that movie. He was my favorite in that movie. Frankly, Langella did not need to come as hard as he did in that movie, but he sure did. And, and uh, sure the it. one principal guy that played the cop, uh, principal from Back to the Future. You played the oh like, sure. Uh, what was his? Uh, the... Yeah, I don't remember the actor's name either, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he was a cop again. Uh, yeah. That doesn't surprise me. So uh, the other one, while Kevin looks that up, um, yeah. is Mary Elizabeth uh, Weinst- Winstead. 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 Uh, yeah, she was... Gwildor. 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 There we go. Because they couldn't they couldn't make Orko look good enough, so they right. they, they changed him up. Right. Okay. To an inventor guy and yeah, man of arms was goblin weird. But Tila is still hot. Uh, Mary, Mary Elizabeth Winstead has been added to the uh, the Ahsoka series. That's right. Courtney Cox was like she was the, the human woman. She was along with that weird dude. But also, fucking Lieutenant Tom Paris from Star Trek Voyager was her boyfriend. Yeah, he was the dude with that guy. <sighs> fucking thing. confusing. The musician that somehow could play the thing to get the yeah. records. Yeah. I'm like, your band sucks, but you're that good of a musician? What? That makes no sense. Robbie, was Robert R- Duncan McNeil. R- Robbie Duncan Mane- McNeil, yeah. <laughs> yep. Fantastic. Yeah. God. That was his breakout role, by the way. Jesus. Uh, I want to say it was know. almost Courtney Cox's. It was. Other well, the, she, she did Springsteen. do the Br- Bruce Springsteen video, yeah. <laughs> what series was that when they're like, they're like, I was so, I hated Courtney Cox for so long. I feel it was in a TV series and they're like, or a comedian that was like, yeah, you know, that was staged, right? Like this whole thing against Courtney Cox getting pulled up because they were next to Courtney Cox and I don't know. Anyways, things I remember that I don't remember. Talking about the compilation show, I love the eighties. No, okay. It was it was like a a, a thing for a character and I, I don't know. Anyways. Sure. Anyways. Well, anyways, what else is on our list? So let's see if we can put rails back on this bitch. Uh, do we want to circle back to Mary Elizabeth Winstead, or do we finish? With oh yeah, I uh, just said that. I don't. I don't know. They, they haven't specified a role yet. Um, yeah, but I, but hey, I, Ramona Flowers, take right? Her. And we know that she can fight from uh, can do fighting well from movies uh, that she's been in recently. So, right, Birds of Prey too. I forgot she was in that. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then she was also good for her. Sky she went, High as yes. Royal Pain. Uh, yeah. That's right. One of my favorite roles of hers. And she was in <laughs> that the one. Dean as her like little jester stepfather sidekick. Right. Yep. Wasn't she recently in like a Netflix made for Netflix or made for Amazon Prime movie where she's like a spy something? The book one. What a fun I, question. I wish I had an answer to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, don't, it's nope. a little box to look at. Them. I, have to look at them. <laughs> uh, I want to say it was a like a weird. She like checked out books in a bag and like. That was like their secret language for getting guns and stuff. No, no, that there was. Um, yes, was that her though? Because it had. Um, no, it was no. Nah. I know what you're talking about though. Fuck. It was not her. It was not her, but I know what you're talking about. I thought it, you had seen it, Kevin. I did, and I'm. I see a lot of shit. And you man. very you very much recommended to watch it. Yes, it because it was list. because it was really interesting. It was dumb but really fun and really interesting. Son of a bitch. What, what I don't know. It? Kate was the new one that she was in that I was thinking of that looks similar to that but is not. Where she's what, what was the other one called? You were just on it, weren't you? No. Because oh. it, it wasn't her that was it was that was uh that was in it. 
I don't know who it is. Uh, it's that one actress who is very Irish, but in everything she's in, she always has to do an English, like a, an American accent. Hmm. I did watch uh, the last duel with uh, Kylo Ren and uh, not not Ben Affleck. You well, mean ben Affleck. Ben Affleck's in it. I know. What a horseshit movie. Don't fucking watch it. It <laughs> is heard. fucking a piece of shit. I've heard that sucks Burn your eyes out would be more fun than watching that fucking movie. Was, I don't know why I continued to watch it. It was it pretty bad. sucked. Okay, I'm going to find it because I remember that Carla Gugino was in it, and I love her. There you go. Uh, so anyways, yeah, don't watch that movie. It really sucks. Yeah, it was, it was bad. It's it's horrible. Fair. Worst ever. I, I kind of got where they were trying to get with it. but it was, Gunpowder milkshake. There it is. Oh, and, uh, shit. It had... Um, it was Lena Headey. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, it was um, Nebula, Amy, Amy Pond, uh, Karen Gillan. Karen Gillan. Uh, what was the lead actress? To be confused with Kieran Gillen. Karen Gillan. Oh, it was Karen Gillan. Okay. Yeah. There it is. Um, Paul Giamatti was in it. <gasps> the last. I like him. I do. Uh, Tessa Thompson says she wants to be Cat- Catwoman. I don't, I don't know if there's any, like, Reality of that coming true, but I think she'd be an awesome Catwoman. Zoe Kravitz is Catwoman. So yeah, we, we, we have we have a Catwoman for a I while now. Unless, she, unless, 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 uh, between Peacemaker, which fucking slaps, <laughs> and <laughs> sure. this new Flash movie can can save the DCEU. Probably she sure could be the the Catwoman of that universe. Yeah, be. that would be fun. She probably have to. Kiss Ben Affleck though, and that sounds like a bad time for her. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. James Gunn also announced that Guardians of the Galaxy three will be the last time that the team has ever seen together. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, yes, because both Bradley Cooper and Batista have said that this is going to be their last foray yep. into the MCU. Yeah, they said they both said they're done. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he likes playing the role, but I'm sure at the same time he's like, "There's no real character development, and I have to sit in a makeup chair for." Seven hours to oh Batista, sure Batista. I, <laughs> Not I had a weird moment there. I'm like yeah, Bradley freaking, Cooper I, is sitting in a fucking I don't know for it, what? Because I'm sure Bradley Cooper's issue is that he his face isn't on screen and he's so goddamn handsome. He is, he is so but like it sounds handsome. like the kind of thing you show up to in pajama pants and hoodie and just like okay, I'm gonna be Rocket Raccoon now. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> right. What's shit? Like, let me be Rocket then. <laughs> hey MC, let Kevin be Rocket. MC- He'll be better M- than the TikTok voice. M- MCU, come on around. <laughs> <laughs> a broad all of it. Invitation. All of you will fit you all in my tiny little. Yes. Oh, I'm God. sure they have a compound we can go to. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they do. Um, <laughs> then, uh, without giving any spoilers, we, I said we were going to talk about this just a little bit. Sure, but not the one that came out today, but last week's episode of the Book of Bubba Fett. I figured we we're just going to do a two episode gibbity bibbity, like we like we tend to do at the end. No, okay. What do you got on Bubba Fett? Oh, I was just going to say, a fucking phenomenal episode. I'm getting sick of it. I I want more. I, I don't. I, they're not. <laughs> They're extending a small little story over five fucking episodes, and it's stupid. I want more Bubba Fett and get like okay, they're they're getting an army. They've been talking about it for the past three fucking episodes. Fucking do something else. Well, they didn't really talk about it. In this well, they did for like two five five minutes, but fan, fantastic episode. Fucking brilliant. Probably one of the best. One of the best Star Wars things I have seen. It is my favorite Mandalorian episode so far. Uh, but just. It had nothing to do with the Bubba. If you wanted a fucking trailer, then put it at the end. Fucking. Anyways, <laughs> I was upset with that. You know what I mean? Like, I want more Bubba Fett. Bubba Fett, whatever. <laughs> I just want more. I want more Bubba Fett. I, yeah. want, I want that story because that's what we were sold on, and it looked good, and it was great. And they're, they were doing such a good job, and now they've just kind of stopped the steamroll of what was good. So since we're talking about it. I have my highest my 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 highest point of appreciation for the episode. Yeah. And my lowest point of annoyance for the episode. Yep. Okay. The thing I most appreciated was uh uh when he had his spear melted down uh. to make uh you know, a gift yeah. for the foundling. 
Uh, she didn't have to go this hard for us, but bless her heart for making a little package for Grogu in the shape of Grogu. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, not intentional. Fucking, oh, it sure was. It hit his little ears and yeah. everything. Yeah. God bless her for that. Um, uh, and my point of irritation is that, um, and I, I, I did the work on this to find out if it was Anakin Skywalker's uh, Nubian fighter. It was not. Right. Uh, the lettering on the side was different. Um I I because there was that discussion on the interwebs, and it, it most definitely is not. And I've I've posted it in, our, in my in my leftist uh, Star Wars group. Nice, but um, uh, that is the dumbest fucking ship for a bounty hunter I've ever seen in my life. Yep. Whose I fucking idea was this? I'm sure Filoni's because it was just another opportunity to suck the flaccid cock of the prequel movies. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is stu- where is he going to put bounties? Like I'm sure what they're doing is he's no longer going to be a bounty hunter, and they are they're ushering in this era of him becoming the ruler of, of Mandalore or like a general or something like that. And you know he's not going to bounty hunt anymore. Cool, whatever. As of current, they haven't set us on that path, so he's still a bounty hunter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where are you going to put the bounties? In the little kid seat for Grogu he got in the back there? Yeah, the not, right. not area that is not for an R2 unit anymore, but clearly a spot where a little size... Where our little boy can, can perfectly can walk fish, and can have cookies and shit. Yeah. Sit He's got his every once in a while stick his head up and yeah, go, what's going on? Cool. Macaroons and his Nintendo Switch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> sitting, back yes. there, sitting back there playing the same little video game that Groot was playing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and a beanbag chair. He somehow fits a beanbag chair in that Absolutely. little area, but he's got a beanbag oh, chair. It's, it's got room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's tiny enough. It was awesome. The thing with the X wings, awesome. The yeah, yeah. BD one. Uh, I don't know if it was specifically BD one, but a BD unit from uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Sure, was very similar. Uh, well, it, it's that exact yeah, model. Yeah, yeah. It, it, we I'm, just don't know if it's Cal's. Right. I'm which just I'm, it, I'm sure at some point we'll get uh, confirmation on. Uh, because they, they, I believe they've they've said that they're going to bring him into more canon shit. Because right. um, he's, a, I mean, for fuck's sake, he looks exactly like the actor. You can just have the actor kind of, I'm <laughs> going, <laughs> you know, like yeah. you do, <laughs> right? But shit, man, it's that's I agree. that's a stupid choice. Like, yeah, the they hot rotted it out and it looked fucking baller with that stupid engine coming out the front. It was. Terrible, awesome. The, the, my <laughs> other thought it was very. That was that was a roller coaster ride for Kevin. My other thought, I, I agree with you, uh, uh, the three thousand percent. That dog saber bit was cool. Though. It was fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it, this is what happened exactly. I'm like, so do you think he still has the dark saber, or did they already figure that shit out with Bo Katan? And we'll see that when Mandalorian comes back. As soon as I finish speaking, <laughs> ow. I had that. Exact, I had that exact same thought, and then I saw it hanging on his belt, and I was like, "Oh, there it is. Cool, cool. He's carrying it like a Jedi. Cool. Uh, fuck, man. Uh, I agree with you about the ship. Uh, and my other question. Spoiler was, alert, guys. <laughs> why? <laughs> I, you know, I don't fucking think we're really giving anything away. Uh, why did he make it? <sighs> why would you take a ship? And make it all bright and shiny when you're a bounty hunter that's trying to it's, sneak in on people. It's the exact same fucking color, shade, and shininess as the Razor's Crest. That's the least amount of things bothering me. Well, it, the yellow would have been more ostentatious. Yeah, I guess, but the yellow would have been, here I come, guys! <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't like it. That like, seems like a waste of time. But anyway, now imagine his armor. He's he's, he's got a thing. It's it's that shiny. He likes silver. shiny things. You're right, shiny. It's all shiny. He's got a motif. He does, and he's fitting it very well. Uh, uh, totally <laughs> agree. I, I think what? I think the short answer to that is it was the ship that she could find, and it just happened to be that. But why isn't a boo fucking ship? On Tatooine, uh, there was something, and I, th- I think in one of the comics or in one of the questionably canon books, where somebody um, uh, came to <laughs> sorry to find Shmi, and they, okay. were, and they were unsuccessful in that. I don't I think maybe they died. Don't fucking quote me on this. I'm I'm remembering something. About somebody coming to check on Shmi at like the behest of um, 
Yeah. Anakin e- either, either Anakin. Or th- th- this would have been while he was a Padawan. Oh, oh sure. Um, Before he found out where she was. Gotcha. Yes. So this would have been at, at, at his behest uh, or possibly even Amidala's. And that's why it was a Nubian fighter. I, mm. I'll have to look it up. I don't remember. But I remember something about somebody coming to check in on Shmi. And it didn't work out well for them. Gotcha. You mean they were killed? I think so. Okay. Fucking... Anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's a new episode. I haven't watched it yet. So. Um, and then the uh, the last thing I have on my list is that new Picard trailer that came out that brought back a certain person who was on the <laughs> who was very much invited on by Patrick Stewart uh, in a live episode of The View. <laughs> Yes, Guinan is back. Yeah, she is! <laughs> this is possibly the, the fighter belonging to Kira Knightley's character. Oh! Sure. Um, she was asked... The double. Uh, yes. Uh, she was asked um, after her tenure as queen ended and she became a senator to go to Tatooine to try and free some of the slaves, specifically uh, Shmi. Uh, that would make sense. That so that it, this sense. might be Sabe's Sabe's Sabe. Mm, I think it's Sabe. Name. I think Sabe. Uh, it, it, so this might be her ship. Yeah, that would make sense. Okay, and it ended poorly for her. Clearly did. Yes, I found it. Yeah, yay. Was that an in canon thing or like? A, I believe a, so. Or was it just a fan theory? Uh, uh, I think it's canon. Okay. It's on Wikipedia. Oh, well. Sure. Probably is closer to canon than fan theory. So, because uh, <laughs> I don't know if they considered Wikipedia the... F- but I don't know if she died. I'm trying to find that. She mm. did. Uh, so, back to Rob's excitement about Guinan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, that was exactly what I expected uh, that that we're going to see of Guinan. And, yeah. and it's perfect. Absolutely. <laughs> Right down to her stupid starship hat. No, she didn't die, so I don't know why I would be there. Because she was at uh, Amidala's funeral. <laughs> maybe she found a different ship? God. But maybe she found God. Or she, maybe she crash landed, or maybe a, the Jawas stole a bunch of shit. Or... They're hairy. Very hairy. They're very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Wally. It was Wally. <laughs> Today on the. Star Wars so, dating game. <laughs> Houdini. Whoopi Goldberg in her stupid starship hat. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. She's kind of known for her hats. She is known for her hats. <laughs> She's known for her and hats. That, and, that and not having eyebrows. And not having eyebrows. All right. But like, it, it's a great introduction for her into the, the scene. It's just like, I'm going to need a, a, a cup of Earl Grey tea, piping hot. I'm just like yes, and that's the the Perfect. hilarious thing is is that you know her her race <coughs> barely ages, right? yeah, because she hung out with Mark Twain and shit. Yep, yep. Um, and Whoopi Goldberg has barely aged, so right. it's like she's fine. <laughs> and it's if you- it's been nearly forty years since she was on the show, uh, so here she is, ten years later. Right, uh, and it's Crazy. it's. It's funny because if you li- if you watch the part where Patrick Stewart asked her about being on there, uh, you hear her. Five-ish. You hear her. You hear uh, Whoopi so Goldberg funny. mention about, oh, I can finally, or I'll have to get rid of my gray dreads, and I'll have to go back to. She doesn't. No, nope, that's nope. not what happened. No, I I can I remember this because I got angry for Whoopi. Somebody else said something, but Whoopi said something about it too. No, she didn't. She didn't say anything about it. Patrick Stewart defended her uh, on it. Like, okay, so so what happened was that uh, Patrick Stewart invited Whoopi to be a part of yep. season two. Yeah, and like they're hugging it out and they're talking. And one of the other hosts, yep. Joy Behar, yep. says, "Are you going to make her get rid of those stupid things?" Pointing to Whoopi Goldberg's dreads, right? A black woman's dreads. A white woman asking if. This white man is going to make her get get rid of her black woman dreads. And Patrick Stewart, being the gem that he is, he goes, she can wear whatever she wants. And I thought Whoopi made just a small comment about... Nope. Are you, I am, not, not in that scene anyway. Not in that clip anyway. I thought that I heard her just... Not like not to agree with her, but just to say that she, would, she didn't necessarily want 
the gray in them. I don't know. Regardless, she is she is wearing um, a hat. A hat, and you do see her a dreads, hat. and they're they're black dreads. They're not gray dreads, right? Um, but <clears throat> but yeah, uh, Wolfie Goldberg's back, and I am delighted. She looks lovely. We also got another scene of Brent Spiner's going to be back. Yeah. Looks like they do a little uh, as a uh, Soon Sun. Yeah. Soon Soon Sons. Soon Sun. Soon 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 Lee Soon Noonie and Soon. Noonie and Soon Sun. Yes. Yes. Because right. Sung Su. Because of not course. The art of fucking war. <laughs> 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 not, not, the Ameri- not the American gymnast uh, that won gold in the most recent Summer Olympics. Her I name, don't want to know what he's... Her doing. name is Sun... Anyways. Oh, I know who you're talking about. You're <sighs> not... Yeah, I don't remember her name. Not Sun Yi. Not Woody Allen's daughter wife. Right. No, 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 no. But her name is like Sunisi, <laughs> but they call her... I forget what they shortened it to. Um, anyways, because uh, they do, of course, per Star Trek episodes, they have to do some time traveling. Because apparently time traveling is so easy in the Star Trek universe, but they always... It sure is. It, yeah. It's just like... It the card maneuver. Or the, the Kirk maneuver. Whatever. Yeah. You just, you just, all you have to do is... F- you have to yeet around the sun. Yeah. No. Because in, in, in the, the fucking the first contact, they just created a fucking field the, thing. The, the, Borg the Borg did that. When they returned, they created their own. Well, they just the replicated Borg what the Borg that. did. Because they had the Borg technology on, on Borg. Borg on Borg. <laughs> Here we and, go again. And Data downloaded like the specs to do that or some so, shit. So, so Data found the Borg technology on board. And the Borg, and Borg. Borg. <laughs> Borg. But in Borg? Star Trek Four, I know. I know. And they yes. were in the past. That's just how that works. Yeah. <laughs> I love that, though. It's, it's, it's such a... What's the science to that? <laughs> well, <laughs> I love that. That whole movie is a beautiful piece of art to me. Yes. What's a guess? Stop asking so many questions and watch the movie, kids. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got whales. Nuclear vessels. <laughs> In Alameda. Yeah. <laughs> mm, good times. Yeah. Whales. Um, but yeah. But you no, remember where we parked. Um, and then we, we get confirmation that, uh, once again, they're going to yeet around the sun, but they're going to get the Borg Queen to help them yeet around the sun. So they're not only are they doing time travel from two separate Star Trek movies, but they're combining them. And that delights me. <laughs> it's, just, it's so easy to time travel in fucking Star Trek. Yeah. Why not? It's fucking, I guess what I guess. It's, they have a, they have a, that hasn't they have a whole set of rules around it called the Temporal Prime Directive. I've got a week off. Let's go to the past. <laughs> Yeah. But apparently in Star Trek Discovery, they haven't used any of that to go back to figure out where this stupid thing is. Because they affecting can't. Them. They, they're, they're not, they, they can't go back because of the, the evil computer thing. They have to hide it in the future where, it, where it's safe. Where it's safe and where they're completely off record. Right. That's that was the whole plot point. They're, they're in the future forever now. Unless they devise with some bullshit reason not to be. I thought they had a cloaking device so they could cloak their ship like the, the Klingon bird of prey did. Which I'm for, by the way. I like. I'm. I'm all about having future, future Starfleet. And Miss Tilly, she'll be back. <laughs> Will she though, or is she going to get that Star Trek, that, that Starfleet Academy spinoff? Mm-hmm. Also, well, if you get the Starfleet Academy spinoff, then then you get more Tilly. You get a lot more Tilly. Series. I know, but I like her and Burnham. They have good chemistry. They mm. do. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, aside from Whoopi and uh, some shots of Brent Spiner and the Borg Queen, not a ton. And new Earth. In the, new yes. information, but a lot of really cool shots. A lot of chitty chitty bang bang. Yeah, yeah. Where, where are they traveling back to Earth 22 something? 2024. Which is, su- the, which is ever unnervingly so right. close. Ever so slight future. That way it, that way it could still happen, but like they, they don't have to directly reference anything current. Yeah. And I'm right. sure it was, oh, surely COVID will be over by then. Oh, boy. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the COVID, as we currently know, it will be different, I'm sure. I don't know if it'll be over, but. Oh, boy. It'll stop mutating. If you fuckers will just get the fucking vaccine. Whatever, right? Yes. 
<laughs> I was just gonna. I, I suddenly had a thought pop into my mind. I'm like, we're talking about vaccines, and we're a podcast. I don't want to get Joe Rogan. Fuck Joe Rogan. Fuck Joe Rogan. By the way, fuck Kevin James too. Oh really? Yeah. Fuck. What That's Joe, too bad. I forget what Joe Rogan said. Oh, J- what doesn't he what say? Doesn't well, he fuck say. that dude. Fuck him. It's true. Yeah. Fuck you, Joe Rogan. Don't come on our podcast. Yeah, and we're not going to go on yours. <laughs> Ooh, I wouldn't want to sit anywhere near Ian just to take a or s- around just steaming dump on his elect on his fucking audio equipment. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah I'm fine with that. Just made me think of news radio all of a sudden. Sorry. Um, <laughs> he did one good thing. Fine. Hey, news radio. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways. Oh, I like this. This is good. This, <laughs> this is new. Um, yeah, not a whole lot new. Um, I mean, we get a new line from John Delancey, and frankly, the more I get to see John Delancey, I'm happy. I love him. I love... Q is... Okay. How you doing, buddy? This has gotten even weirder in my relationship because Joanna doesn't like John Delancey as Q. She thinks he's a hamster, and... I understand, but like I grew up watching Q and I have always loved his trickster nature and his just silly asshole with a message character that he has. And it's, it's just, it's been, I've had so much fun watching him and I'm so excited. Like this has been a defining thing about our relationship and, 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 and watching nerd things. Like I was so excited to show her the first episode of, of, uh, of Star Trek next gen because Q was in it and she just kind of goes, sure was what? That's weird. I'm like, Oh, he comes back. He does like, yes, of course he comes back. He's amazing. What, 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 what's the problem? Uh, You don't like Q. No, so like I'm 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 excited for Q. I love Q. I think he is my favorite villain from the Next Gen series, and oh, I can't wait. March third. Yep. Like basically as soon as Discovery's over. Yep. Yep. What is Captain Todd's cheesy tuna surprise? <laughs> <laughs> oh, inside jokes will get you inside work. Uh. It's uh, you take a box of mac and cheese, you take a can of tuna, you take some peas, you mix it up. It's good. Oh, I've done want, the tuna. I've done the I've done the tuna. I've never done the peas with it. If you want, here's the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> it's the stuff I just said. <laughs> Don't forget to mix it up. Sure. Well, who's Captain Todd? It's good. Oh, <laughs> it's a guy. You just you just made it <laughs> as a thing. You, you, no. I love how the two. Kevin- no, it is it is specifically from something. Uh, oh. I love how the two Kevins on there are both former chefs. The two Kevins that I know. The other Kevin on there mentioned something. He was like a chef for 19 oh, years. Yeah. Former chef. Anyways. And mine is nothing requiring culinary expertise. <laughs> you just no. mix it up. <laughs> yeah. He also mentioned mac and cheese. A lot of people mention mac and cheese. Because it's the perfect yeah. fucking cover. It's cheesy and it's noodles. What are they a fucking lot? Right. I'm with you. And everybody's preferring the box over homemade. Yeah. yeah. Correct. I'm, I'm with you. I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> Fucking homemade is fun and tasty, but takes way too much fucking time. Here's an unpopular opinion. I like the box that comes with the cheese goo, not the powder. Oh, you like oh, the that's Velveeta. Fair. Deluxe. You like the Velveeta. Mm-hmm. You like the Deluxe. Yeah, or the Vel- what are, Velveeta you know, or the Velveeta Deluxe. There's a, there's a Cracker Barrel one that's really good. Oh, oh sure, sure. Yeah, I haven't tried that one. Yeah. I forgot to tell you guys. Oh. Uh, a couple weeks ago... Uh, I had an evening to myself, and I used that evening to try to masturbate myself. so <laughs> much. I do that every That's night. That's good. And also, you had to take a break, so you got some food. Yeah, so I got some food, and I tried mac and cheese. the Cheetos mac and cheese. What? There's a bug. Uh, oh yeah, there's box elders everywhere. Yeah, in this room. for some odd reason, we have fucking box elders. How are they in our alive? I don't anyway, know. Uh, it, the Cheetos brand mac and cheese. I keep I keep side eyeing it. And oh, I, I tried it, store. so you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It's that bad, huh? Did you do the regular or did you do like one of the, one of the, the, the did, spicy ones? So I did the regular because I, I, did, I just... Opportunity without Joanna there to, to I, put some spice point. in your yeah, life. That's a good point. Put some spice in my, I put... Yeah, but if I'm going to spice something up, I'm going to spice it up. Right. Fair um, enough. Fair enough. Like I, I specifically smoked hot peppers in my smoker a couple months back. <laughs> that and conversation just, went way different than I thought it was about to. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think I'm smoking over here? I thought you were about to say, so I smoked it up, and then I started making the fucking... Anyways, continue. I mean, that would have made this decision tolerable, probably. <laughs> or at least reasonable. Like, like, there would have been a reason. There would have been, like... Actual good. Was it no. good or bad? That was terrible. Oh, it was bad. Oh, it tasted like it tasted. Uh, <laughs> uh, <sighs> so you know the good part about Cheetos, like sure. the crunch yep. and that f- blast of cheesy flavor. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah take all of that. Super Metro without it, it. Fucking soggy as shit. <laughs> yeah, Sounds- make it soggy. And then remove all of the good flavors, but just keep the, like, flavor blast punch of, like, the cheesy ch- Cheeto flavor. Like, okay, they, they ground if? out so, like, the, Cheeto they taste like, dust. So it tastes like the generic Cheetos that are horrible. I like generic che- Cheetos. No, like but, the really, really generic oh, ones. Oh, oh, oh. Like the sure, imposter sure, sure. ones. I see what you mean. I like Nanny's hot fries. Anyway. I love um, too. Remember those? They're so good. <laughs> so, what if? So good. You made your, your your shitty mac and cheese. Yeah. But then you you got real Cheetos, too. And you <gasps> crushed some up so you had big crunchies of it. And you sprinkled that on top of the motherfucker. Oh, my God. That would have been delicious on a regular back box of mac and cheese. With this, it would have been horseshit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. If Mayor of Kingstown has taught me anything. <laughs> <laughs> Which fucking a dude? Watch it! Oh, it's so fucking good. I will. On the anyway, where were we? Uh, sprinkling Cheetos on. So sprinkling Cheetos on top on of mac on cheese. mac and cheese. Yeah, yeah. I, I, no, I uh, I, see, I jumped on that grenade for you guys, so you don't. But have see, to. then you and Joanna could have two different. You could you could have the spicy one because you could separate the cheese before you put them on, and then put the uh, the non the non spicy ones on Joanna's. I'm saying it was terrible. No, I don't no, want I'm to saying try it. Kevin, Kevin's idea. Oh, Kevin's yes, idea. Sure, the, the, the good one. The, the good, good idea. Like, the good idea. Because that's the thing is that I I have come up with a lot of methods of making really shitty food a lot better mm. because that was kind of the fun of culinary school is yeah. you're you're experiencing all of these amazing techniques and all these wonderful foods and all these wonderful fancy things, but it's impossible to practice at home because all the shit's really expensive. Right, and you're a college student. Yep, uh, going to a, a <laughs> for-profit college. So what happens is you take these ideas, these theories, uh, these techniques, and you put it to cheap food to make it good. Yep. Um, I I could make you a ramen, like a, a shitty uh, like packet Marchuan ramen. packet yep. ramen stir fry that would blow your fucking mind. I want this in my mouth right now. I, did, I will. I will I did happily it camping with Mike once. We made a, a huge pot of it. Sounds I was going to awesome. say, like, I I am not against the idea of you and I going to town on like uh, just just going. <laughs> I know going what I said. Why, why am I cut out of this? <laughs> I thought this was a threesome. Apparently, now it's just yeah, it's best threesome ever. Nick's got to be there for it too. I've seen yeah, some motherfucker. Yeah, he'll seen, watch. He'll I've, watch. I've seen. His, I've, no, I've seen his plates. He can he can run with us. Oh no, that's a good point. I have seen his plates too. Never mind. You're right. I can also make drinks oddly enough because oddly enough, I'm a certified mixologist. <laughs> Okay, so here's here's my idea for the dumbest dinner party we've ever come up that with. That was a backtrack, dude. <laughs> so, um, the the entire meal must cost $20. What was this guy's grocery game? Done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, you, you are allowed to have one super nice ingredient, but that's it. Yeah, we've all seen guys' grocery games. This is, you, you set up a guys' grocery games. <laughs> I don't know what that is, so I'm going to keep talking as if I don't know what that is. The grocery I don't games. Know Guy Fieri. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Guy Fieri. Oh, that's why I haven't seen it. I don't like Guy Fieri. <sighs> I don't like him either. He's such a good boy. He's a good host. He's a great host. I don't know. I like watching that show. It's a lot of fun because you watch them. Like I will, I will throw verbal hands over why Guy Fieri is is a genuinely good dude. It's a, it, you get to see him people cook uh, doing exactly what you're. It's kind of like a grocery store version of Chop sometimes. Okay. But he's got different games that he plays as well. 
Uh, and it's it, it kind of makes us chopped with that. Uh, what was that grocery cart? Oh, that yeah. supermarket dash or whatever yeah. it was called. Supermarket sweep. Yeah, that's, that's it. It, it kind of combines those two things. Sure does. Oh, okay, I think it's probably filmed on the same set. Uh, and sometimes yeah. it's fun because they get the uh, the big the they get the judges who are normally on there who are big time well known chefs that you've seen on every single mm. cooking show on the Food Network. And then they have to play the games, and that's even more enjoyable to watch these big time chefs play those games because they're like ah oh, fuck because they're like we always get to watch it now we have to play and they're like ah oh, fuck how do I do this but it's very sure. like you were saying it's interesting to watch them go and what you were saying how they take just because sometimes it is you have to take like fucking stuff out of it like one of the games is like food out of a can and you have to make a gourmet meal out of food from a can yeah and it's 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 amazing I mean I, I can't obviously you can't taste it but I love this idea it's a college iron chef. Iron? Iron. Uh, iron. 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 Iron butterfly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> In the Garden of Eden. Um, yeah. Hey, Marge, remember when we used to make out to this hymn? <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward 90 minutes later. Oh, I love it. Was that the movie? No, that was, no, that was, that was an episode. episode. That was okay. a really good episode. Early, okay. like, first couple seasons episode. Uh, probably, I would say probably four or four, five, maybe. Maybe, yeah. I was just remember a Treehouse of Horror episode? I don't think so. No, because I remember it was Bart. Bart made, switched the music. Yeah. Hey, is there anything else on your list? No, I just nerd grabbed. <laughs> what about the, uh, the, the Adam Project? Do you want to talk about that one? Uh, I wanted to read, get more information about it unless we want to talk about it. We can talk about it next time. It's fine. Let's talk about it next time. I thought Free Guy was going to be his last movie before his hiatus, but I guess this, I guess this is. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, Red, the, the red one. The one he did with Wonder Woman and, and oh, Rock. Oh, that one, yeah. The, don't watch that movie either. It was, it was all right. I kind of enjoyed it. It was cute. Yeah. It was it was, was Rob Reynolds and The Rock being Ryan Reynolds and The Rock. Oh, okay. With Gal Gadot, I see what we were tossed in there right. for some good looking people. <laughs> <laughs> Talking okay. about the best threesome ever. I'd watch that. <laughs> nerd grabs, nerd grabs, nerd grabs. Uh, yeah, nerd grabs. Um. I got a passport. I got my passport and a little passport holder. So yeah, I, really I like was going to say. Lulu Dallas with, multi-pass. I need to. I need it to, holds all my papers. I need to find my passport. <laughs> it's in my uh, room somewhere, probably. Sure. Because you need all this when you travel to a foreign country. It, uh, right, you do. And uh, it's starting in like October um, around the States. Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, well, now in Minneapolis and St. Paul, you need fucking your. When are you leaving? 22nd. Okay, so we will have one more podcast for you. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I didn't bring your birthday present. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I got my passport, and, and I think that's about it. Really? I don't think I bought anything recently that was real nerdy. I nope. got these fucking pants. They're great pants. They are really great pants. <laughs> I know y'all can't see, but they're yeah. This is this is a plaid and kind of different shades of that seventies brown, and I'm living for them. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're a little bit yellow. They're a little bit red. They're a little bit country. They're, they're a little, little bit, bit rock country, and roll. They're a little bit rock and roll. Yeah, these are the pants. Like paired with a a couple of different shirts I have. Like it it goes exactly for the aesthetic I want in life, which is at any moment this man might start fronting a ska band. <laughs> <laughs> at at any moment now he might start doing the ska step. You know the yeah. one. <laughs> 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 yes. At any time, I will. I will just magically apparate a fucking skateboard, and suddenly, <laughs> like you, out of nowhere, no, uh, there are no discernible speakers in the area, and yet you all hear Goldfinger Superman happening. Here I am. Yeah, that's exactly what this guitars and trombones appear. Yeah, uh, I got these pants and I got uh, more work on my tattoo. Which I'm excited about. Got some leaks there. Yeah, hey, he's, he's got a little bit of uh, my Valkyrie going on, but I'm, a little I'm, bit. I'm, it, she's finally starting to heal a little bit more. So maybe, yeah. in a, maybe in a few months, I can finally get it retouched. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. <sighs> it is sad. Sorry, it's annoying. It's very annoying. It is. I'm sorry, buddy. It's all right. But yeah, no, that's, uh, that's me. 
Uh, I have a, a couple of items that I pre-ordered like literally a year ago. One finally came. Uh, I got the Nerf Mandalorian. We did talk about this last episode. Well, but, yeah. I, I finally, I finally got it. Um, oh, okay. And it, uh, it it makes noise and shit, it and does. that's pretty dope. It uh, is. The scope is the world's most useless thing. Oh yeah. Um, but it, it does is, have a light that goes on inside of it. It does, so, and that that makes it worse. worse. That makes it worse somehow. Yeah. Um, it is very cool. It is it near is very cool. Uh, and then the other thing, I got notification that finally shipped, and is supposed to be here. I think Friday, but I'll be at Sabers by then anyway. Um, I uh, uh, Doctor Strange's amulet. Ah, uh, nice. Holding I have the time stone. Nice. I have Agamotto. Yes, I, uh, that is, should be coming. As well as months early, because uh, it's funny that this one also took over a year. Uh, but this one I pre-ordered not too long ago, and they're like, "Guess what? It's ready soon, so we'll be shipping it out to you." Um, the first pack of the Power Rangers Ninja Turtles figures <laughs> crossover figures. Uh, yes. So I got my Leonardo and Donatello as the blue and black Rangers, Ooh, respectively, nice. uh, coming in the mail here. Was this was this from that that episode in the two thousands? No, it's just it's this new thing oh. that Hasbro's doing. Oh, okay. They're just randomly crossing over. So it's it's literally turtles in in the Power Ranger suits. Oh, cool, <laughs> fun. Yeah, sounds awesome. They're made, like which is funny. disproportionate or or proportional. Um, well, it's they, I don't know which is funnier to me. They they look like turtles uh-huh. in the Ranger suits. Okay. Um, and so, like, their weapons are their turtle weapons, but the Power Ranger style. So, like, oh, uh, like so basically Donatello, who's the Black Ranger, has basically a halberd. Um, uh, it's funny because Leonardo, uh, because uh, Billy's weapons are, like, these long uh, psi lances. Oh, sure. Uh, so he has these basically psi katanas, and uh, Raphael has katana size because he's – because he's the red one who had a sword. Yeah. Um, and then Michelangelo is the yellow one. And the pink ranger is April O'Neil. Okay. And it just looks like the pink ranger. Yeah. It is absolutely indiscernible in any way, <laughs> shape, or form from any other pink ranger figure, except it does come with interchangeable heads. <laughs> And the interchangeable head. So you basically have to have April O'Neil. April O'Neil in the rest of the Pink Ranger suit. Otherwise, yeah, how the why fuck even are you going to know? Yeah. But she comes with Michelangelo, so you don't have much of a choice. Uh, Raphael comes with a foot soldier, Tommy. Huh. All who's right. wearing sort of a, a black and lavender colored ninjetti foot soldier amalgamation suit because it's got like the face mask and the headband but you can still see that it's him and then the shredder is the green ranger sorry i just i just reminded myself of the travesty that is uh the fact that we never got a sequel to that really goddamn good power rangers movie why do you have to keep reminding me i'm of this so stuff? sorry man it was so the shredder good. green ranger is pretty cool though oh yeah the shredder green ranger is pretty yeah. cool here yeah, you're right yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right um, speaking of the Power Rangers movie, uh, so Elizabeth Banks, I follow her on TikTok, and she did the whole, like, the, you know my name, I'm called Oh, it. sure. And then I wrote a message on there and said, um, excuse me, you're missing, like, your most well-known character ever, uh, Dr. Kim, hello. That's true, she did. From Scrubs. But I also commented on that video. Did you? I did. Oh, well, I did, too. What did you say? You say the same thing? Uh, no, 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 no. I- <laughs> I talked about how fucking robbed we were out of a sequel to that goddamn Power Rangers movie. <laughs> we were. We so were. That movie was not. It had no right being as good as it was. Right. That's exactly what I was trying to say. It's like, it wasn't good, but it was a lot better than I had expected. And first of all, fuck, it was man. Good. I mean, it was good. It was just like, it was way better than it. Yeah. Ugh. I'm so disappointed we didn't get a sequel to that. Yeah, the sequel, right. I feel like, would have been even better. So when I was doing my plasma donation thing today, when a movie was on TV, it was that wonderful, awesome movie that was called Aragon. No. <laughs> no. Uh, no. And then I, I had, like, one of the noisy machines and the phlebotomist that, uh, that was doing my thing. Like, I kind of, like, we talk a lot. Uh, I wouldn't say like we're friends or anything, but she knows who I am and I know who she is. Anyways, 
She's like, oh, I'm like, oh, you put me in the noisy machine today. And she's like, yeah, sorry you can't hear the TV. I'm like, well, I'd rather listen to this noisy machine than that shitty movie. And she goes, I don't even know what movie this is. I'm like, good, don't. Just, that's, just, just yeah. ignore it. That's why I always bring the earbuds in my, you know, I just hang on my phone. Oh, I hang on my phone too, but I just, it was making, it was a perfect setup for that fucking, I would rather listen, literally listen to this noisy Oof. plasma machine than fucking... That crappy movie. Yeah. Oh, thank God there was only like twenty minutes left of it, so I didn't have to oh. do it for long. Oh, that means that means Jeremy Irons wasn't even in it anymore. That makes it worse. Uh no, he was when I was waiting in line. Oh, I did forget one thing. Oh yeah, well oh. done. Uh so I went to Walmart. Uh because they're the only ones who have the pain box edition of the of the new Dune movie. Okay. Oh. Uh where the where the movie comes in the in pain, a pain box. box. Um <laughs> and so hilariously, uh it came packaged in this like anti theft box, of course. Uh, but it was so thick that it was like basically stuck in there. Uh, but it has like these two like ventilation holes at the bottom so that there can be airflow to help get boxes out of there. But again, it was so thick <laughs> that it just wouldn't come out. So I, I, I pressed my finger through to push it out, uh, but it got stuck. <laughs> and I skinned part of my finger, <laughs> yanking it out on the pain box. On the, so That's I, amazing. I, I the pain box caused me very real pain, and it's like now just healing. Like I took a good oh, chunk wow, out. Oh yeah. yeah, I took a good chunk out of my Visual finger. That would be so so okay. Would that yeah. be a good definition of what irony is? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In case you were looking for a good definition, you cause yourself real pain on a fake pain box. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my my prime example of that was when I. Uh, I got. A, I was doing tech week at a theater, and it was like I just got a hotel room because like I don't want to drive fucking ninety minutes. Anyways, so I was doing that, and then uh, the only room they had available was like the handicap accessible room. I'm like, <sighs> okay, you know, whatever. These rooms are fucking dope, dude. Well, I felt bad because like if somebody that was handicapped actually needed it, but anyways, I ended up pulling a calf muscle and ended up on crutches during tech weekend. <laughs> Amazing. Perfect. <laughs> I'm like, Perfect. this is a total definition of irony. Anyways, they're like, yeah, yeah, it is. I like that ironic song. But, anyway, that's what I said. <laughs> but these things are actually ironic. Right. Yeah, yeah, everything yeah. in her song. The only thing that's ironic about the song is that it's not about irony at all. Uh, anyways, that's the anything joke. else? Sorry. Anything else? Anything else? I'm anything sure that was until we got all right well thank you for joining us here on best recent ever episode 145 uh brought to you by heroic goods and games and i didn't know where i was going with that brought to you by heroic goods and games and chambered wines i'm nick i'm rob i'm kevin and we will see you next time i'm rob (laughs) jesus christ The views held here by the nerds of Best Threesome Ever do not directly reflect the views of nerds everywhere. (laughs) 